Welcome back to Tertium Rejects. I'm Kyphus, and today we're going to be looking at a build I call the Sergeant, because I am a fluffy nerd who loves to just kind of play things that I think would make sense in the lore. So we're going to be using a stub revolver and a power sword, because I think that's what a lot of sergeants would take in the 40k or 41st millennium, or a bolt pistol, if we had one. Uh, we're also going to be taking tools like voice of command and shredder frag grenades to help buy time and make space for our team, get them out of tight spots if we need to. But we're mostly focused on our weapons here, because with this talent tree set up right here on the screen, I'll talk through it more in depth later, but this is the talents we're going to be using. With this particular setup, your ranged and melee damage is absurdly high. As you probably saw in the intro clip that I put at the start, you can kill lines of maulers, you can murder crushers with it, you can quickly snap shots to kill elites and specials and it's it's just so much fun to play i had to share it with you also i think it's about time i gave the revolver some love because this is honestly my favorite weapon in the entire game i don't care if it gets nerfed or if it's too strong or whatever i just like being a guy with a pistol and it's just so much fun to be able to just pop gunners all day with no hesitation at all but when I was looking over my past videos, I decided I really wanted to show you that you don't need to have the exact same setup I run to make this work. For instance, here's my stub revolver. As you can see, I take Maniac and Carapace damage as my perks, and I take Surgical and Hand Cannon as my blessings. It's because from all the playing I've done, this seems to work the best. I need the Carapace damage to help deal with Crushers specifically because I'm not taking Crack Grenades. And I need the Maniac damage to make sure that I can always one-shot specialist enemies even without a crit. I don't need the weapon to crit in order to be able to kill them with one hit. And that's that's an important breakpoint to have. So for this particular build, for this revolver, all you need is hand cannon and plus Maniac damage. It doesn't matter what your other blessings and perks are. If they're the ones I have, great. It'll work a little bit better. But as long as you have those two, the build can do what it needs to do. Uh, if you don't have carapace damage, it's going to take you three shots to kill a crusher instead of two, but honestly, who cares? They're still dead. Or for our melee weapon, the Mark VI Power Sword. For this one, Power Cycler can be one of the most frustrating blessings in the game to get, but it is kind of necessary if you want to run a Power Sword seriously. You don't need Power Cycler 4, like you can see here, that gives you three empowered attacks. I'm going to have to show you on an enemy. One, two, three. Uh, you just need Power Cycler 2, because the combo you're going to be doing is a push block stab into a downward strike. And that alone, combined with the quick draw crit from our stub revolver, let me get a stack of weapon specialist real quick. So as you can see here, one, two, three, and he's dead. So you don't necessarily have to take carapace on your pistol if you don't, you just don't have access to it, or maybe your weapon's locked, whatever. Uh, as long as you have that maniac damage and the uh, hand cannon, you're going to be fine. And for the power sword, as long as you have power cycler, you're going to be fine. Uh, honestly, nothing else matters on the power sword. You just have to have power cycler. Uh, slaughter helps a great deal. It will help you kill hordes a lot faster. Uh, plus carapace damage on the perks will help you kill crushers a little bit easier in melee. But they're not necessary. If you don't want to take those, you don't have to. Or if you can't take them, it's fine. You also don't have to run the power sword with this one. You can also just run like a combat axe. It's just the only thing that really is going to help a lot is make sure that the weapon has the finesse modifier. This is going to give you more damage on weak spot hits, it's going to make your crits hit a little bit harder, and it's going to give you extra attack speed, most importantly, which synergizes really nicely with weapon specialist. So now that you've seen the talents and the weapons, let's go into uh, some gameplay and talk about why this build works. The very first thing you're going to want to be thinking about when designing your own build, or you know, when you're playing around with this one, is how are we going to stay alive? It is entirely possible to beat the hardest difficulties at Darktide, even at just level 1 with grey weapons. I've seen it done. I'm personally not good enough to do that in particular, but you can do it if you're talented enough at the game. But for the 99% of us who are not able to do that, we do need to have something that'll keep us alive. So for this one, we're going to be taking Close Order Drill and Confirmed Kill. These are very reliable talents. They don't require any thought to use. They just kind of automatically happen. 
Um, I've tested out a bunch of different toughness regenerating talents in this build, and these two, I've well, the toughness damage reduction and the regen from confirmed kill, uh, work the best in my experience. But I will show you a few other options you can take. Exhilarating takedown is one that you can consider. It's only one point. You're already taking long shot and volley adept on the left side of the tree, so it's very easy to access. Another good option, since we're taking weapon specialist, is on your toes. This means that whenever you basically whenever you swap your weapon after killing anything, you're going to regain up to 20% toughness, and it's got a 3 second cooldown on each, so it works. If you swap to your melee weapon, you'll get 20%, kill something, swap to your ranged weapon, you'll get another 20%. And usually that cooldown is pretty negligible, as long as you're not, you know, like trying to cheese it and just spam that over and over and over again. Uh, the next thing we need to look at for our, our how to create this build is what kind of abilities do we want to center around? Well, we've already picked our weapons, a power sword and a Zorona stub pistol. These are both excellent weapons at dealing with elite enemies and specialists, so we don't really need to have the ability to deal with those from our talent tree. So we're not taking crack grenades. We don't need them. Instead, we're going to take frag grenades because you don't want to be using your pistol into hordes very often. It's extremely ammo inefficient. It's just really not going to do what you need it to do. And frag grenades just fill that niche nicely. It also really helps that frag grenades are much more valuable as a situational tool. If you see that your zealot is getting overwhelmed by a pack of ragers, you can just throw a frag grenade. They'll all get staggered and they can kill them all. Or, you know, if you see your Psyker getting pushed into a corner by a big horde and uh, they're running like a Surge Staff, uh, Frag Grenade will save their life. So, Frag Grenades just have a lot of utility, so we're going to be taking them. Next up, for our Aura, we do need to take Survivalist. I'm not a huge fan of always taking Survivalist, but it does give you a big boost to your team. Uh, makes it so ammo just isn't a concern at all if you're using your melee weapon a decent amount. And it's just an overall really good aura. And since we're taking frag grenades, it's going to save us a talent point um, li a little bit later on by not switching over to a different aura. Next up, we have our combat ability, Voice of Command, with paired with Duty and Honor. You're always going to take Duty and Honor if you go Voice of Command. It wouldn't make any sense not to. It's free toughness, it gives it to your entire team, and it can exceed your max toughness. So this is kind of an obvious choice to take. Now, here's where something is going to be a little controversial. And if you yell at me for it, I'm going to just say that you're way too reliant on using Voice of Command to cover your bad gameplay. We do not need to take Tactical Awareness. I know, heresy, right? Try not to burn me at the stake for this, but hear me out. With this particular build, we are so incredibly lethal. We have so many different tools to help make space for ourselves. We're using a weapon that can clear through hordes like butter. We do not need to be spamming voice of command. And normally I'm fine with that. I do that in a lot of my builds, like in my plasma gun build, I do use this. But in this one, by just giving up those two points, which I know is hard, we can take a lot more damage out of the tree. Rather than being forced to go down the left side with uh, Marksman's Focus, because for a revolver, to make it work, you do need these talents. Deadshot, Determined, if you're not running Executioner Stance, and Precision Strikes, Fully Loaded, and Superiority Complex. This is the core talents that make a revolver work. If you don't have these, your revolver is going to be less efficient than someone who did bring them. So this is just a necessity we have to build around. So with that in mind, we're taking the two points that we spent, or that we would have spent to get tactical awareness, and we're putting them in the right side of the tree. So we're going to be taking uh, reciprocity. This is just going to give you more crit chance whenever you dodge, stacking up to five times in total 25% chance to crit. As you can imagine, especially if you don't have surgical on your weapon, this is a huge boost to your damage. And it also really helps out your melee because we're bringing a weapon that has finesse on it. Whether you wanted to bring a combat axe, knife, power sword, whatever, they all have finesse on them. So having more crit is going to just get more out of that modifier. Next up, we're taking Desperado on the right side of the tree for the 10% melee crit and 25% melee finesse bonus. This means that with Reciprocity fully stacked, we're now up to about 40% chance to crit with just our talents. We don't have anything on our weapons, nothing like that, just from the talents. Then we're not going to take Exploit Weakness because we really need to have Toughness Boost. Yes, it's a note. It's called Toughness Boost. It gives you 25% or 25 toughness. This just really helps kind of make you feel a little less squishy 
And uh, if you're comfortable without using it, you can take Exploit Weakness, but from what I've found when I don't use it, I, I go down a lot more, especially to like Pox Bursters or just random things hitting me. So if you can get around that, then more power to you. You are a better player than me, but I really like to have the extra toughness just to have a little bit more margin for error. Then we have Trench Fighter Drill. This is just a very simple talent, 10% attack speed. Attack speed works really well with crit uh, kind of oriented builds, and since we're taking Reciprocity and Desperado, we do have a pretty decent chance to crit, so having more attack speed is just nice, and it also is good even when you're not critting, just being able to hit things more often is, is powerful. Then we have the Keystone, and this is really what I built this around, and it's Weapon Specialist. Weapon Specialist gives you, uh, you gain Range Specialist on melee kills, stacking up to 10 times, and you gain Melee Specialist on ranged kills, which only stacks one time. What this means is you only have to shoot one target to get the full benefit out of Melee Specialist, and what that does is whenever you wield your melee weapon after killing something with your ranged weapon, you're going to gain 15% attack speed, which is huge. I don't think any other class in the game has this much of a boost to their attack speed just from, like, passive talents. Uh, so you get 15% attack speed, you get 10% dodge speed, and 10% dodge distance. And the best part, it lasts for 10 seconds. This is always, almost always enough time for you to kill whatever you need to kill. Uh, for the range specialist part, so when you uh, say you're killing things in melee, this will stack up to 10 times. And each stack is going to give you extra ranged attack speed, so this can work really well with like the Columbus, for instance. It's okay on like shotguns, it makes the Cantrell fire a little bit faster, which is nice. Uh, but more importantly, it gives you 33% crit chance per stack, so this ends up being a lot. I'm not going to try to do the mental math here, but it's well over 100%. This also means that you only need to kill three enemies in melee to guarantee your next shot is a critical hit. This is extremely powerful with weapons like the revolver or the plasma gun, where you guarantee a crit on a fast draw weapon is always going to be good, because you just flick it up and you just, like, you know, a flamer shows up, you hit them in the body, they are super dead, and you just don't have to worry about them anymore. Next up, we're going to be taking two talents to augment Weapon Specialist to make it even stronger. Now, I'm going to assume you're using the Revolver for this part, and I'll mention if you're using a different weapon, you might not need to take these. But the first one is Always Prepare. And what it does is, activating Range Specialist replenishes up to 3.3% of your missing ammo in your clip from your reserve, rounded up for each stack. So if we have 10 stacks of range specialist active so we've killed 10 things in melee uh, when we switch to our revolver it will have two shots in it but even if you only kill one thing in melee it will still load one bullet into your revolver which is insanely strong as you can imagine you can be effortlessly swapping between ranged and melee just with this talent it's so strong i almost dropped a volley adept for it um, which is a very powerful reload talent uh, so yeah, if you're taking the revolver, take Always Prepared. If you're using something like the Columnus or the Plasma Gun or, you know, a Vrax or something, you, you really don't need this. It's kind of redundant. But for the revolver specifically, this talent is probably one in the one of the best in the entire tree. Like, no joke, it's, it's really freaking strong. The last one that we're taking is going to be Invigorated. What this does is when you activate Melee Specialist, you restore 20% of your stamina. As you can imagine, when we're taking Deadshot, which drains our stamina, having a way to regenerate that stamina is always going to be good. Most people like to take Duck and Dive for this, but what I find Invigorated has over Duck and Dive is you don't need to be dodging ranged attacks to generate your stamina back up. You just need to swap to your melee weapon. And this also has a little bit more utility where, you know, maybe there's a Rager up in your face and you've been firing off, you run out of bullets, and your stamina is empty. Well, as soon as you pull out your sword, you can block. And that's always going to be the case. And the really nice thing about this is it has no cooldown. You can literally farm stamina just by swapping between your weapons. You do have to kill something with your revolver for it to work. But as you remember, every time we kill something, we get a bullet back. With uh, When we kill something with our melee weapon, we get a bullet back in our revolver. So we can easily swap back to the revolver, fire off another shot, boom. Uh, as soon as we swap back to our melee weapon, we have another 20% stamina. And you can just keep repeating this until your stamina is full. It's basically infinite stamina. I'm actually really surprised I haven't seen anybody else use this yet, because it is... I think much better than duck and dive just because it doesn't have that stipulation that you need to be dodging ranged attacks specifically. 
Instead, all you need to do is shoot something, which is what you were going to do anyway, and then swap your melee weapon back to ranged, fire off again, repeat as needed. So that's pretty much the guide. That's everything I have to share with you today. And uh, just if I can give a few quick words of advice when you're running this, make sure that you are playing both of your weapons. Don't neglect your melee for your ranged. I know the revolver is really strong. I know it's really fun to kind of hang back and shoot stuff, but you really shouldn't be doing that with this build because you're going to be missing out on a lot of damage and a lot of utility to help your team out. Um, also, I do want to mention a quick thing about frag grenades and the lack of tactical awareness. Dropping tactical awareness is hard. I know. I'm very sad too. But if you get used to it, you're going to be a much better player. You're going to know that like this cooldown is super strong and that when I use it, it's got to have a lot of impact. I can't just use it because a poxwalker hit me in the back and then I have it up again in 10 seconds. We do need to get used to that as an idea. As for frag grenades, frag grenades are probably the best game in the or best grenade in the game, and I don't say that flippantly. They're so strong because not only do they do damage, not only do they apply bleed stacks, but they have a lot of stagger. If you throw a frag grenade at a group of bulwarks that's coming towards you, it will stagger all of them. That's why it's so strong. So use your grenades uh, frequently. We do have grenade regen in the game or in this build. We are getting one back every 60 seconds from demolition stockpile, so you don't need to worry about throwing your grenades. Just throw them; like they'll regenerate fairly quickly. 60 seconds is not a long time in Dark Tide. Usually your matches are going to be about 25 minutes, so this is a lot of grenades that you'll have. Uh, and use your voice of command only when you really, really need to. If there's a teammate down, if you're completely surrounded, if you see um, your Psyker about to get bonked by a Crusher, use it smartly. You're going to have to get rid of the idea that you can just spam this ability whenever you want. I don't think that this is going to stay in the game forever, so I think that you, learning when to use Shout is an important skill to develop as a veteran. So... Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Now get out there and slay some heretics. Kyphus, out.